Hello, today we're continuing in our series on GCSE physics revision and we're going to be looking at electrical power. Now you may recall that when we did classical mechanics at the beginning of this series we defined power as energy provided over a particular time. So power is energy divided by time. That was for the mechanics that we did at the beginning. That is also true for electrical power. Power is the amount of energy divided by the time that that energy is provided. I just want to remind you of two other formulae that we've already derived in this series on electricity. We defined a volt as the work done moving a charge. That was the definition of a volt. We also defined the current as being the charge moved over time. Now work, of course, is also energy. It's all measured in joules. So work, which is energy, is V times Q, just by rearranging this formula. Work is V times Q. And I can put that into this formula here. So now I've got that power is energy over time, but energy is VQ. So I've now got that power is VQ over time. But look, Q over T is current. So power is voltage times current. So when you're talking about electrical goods, the power is the voltage that is across that um, component multiplied by the current that's passing through it. How do we get power and energy? Energy, of course, is just um, the energy you get, the power is the energy per second. In what ways do you get power from electrical components? Well, here's a component. It's a filament lamp. And it will give you light energy. Here's another component. It's a food mixer. It's a mechanical device. It's got a motor in it. It will get you mechanical energy. Here's another device. It's a kettle. You plug it in and it gives you heat energy. And here's another device. It's a speaker on your hi-fi system that gives you sound energy. So power and energy are needed for all the components that you put into a circuit. And that means that if you go back to some of our basic circuits, the sort of very basic one we did when we introduced V equals IR, Ohm's law, we said that we've got a battery of battery uh, of voltage V, we've got a current I, we've got a resistor of value R, and we said Ohm's law says that V equals IR. But now I'm also telling you that the power dissipated in this resistance is equal to V times I. So there is power in this resistance. Energy is being dissipated in this, in this resistance. Chances are that what will happen is it will get hot. It will radiate heat. That's why when you touch some electrical components, they feel hot because power and energy are being dissipated in them. Now, if power is equal to V I, you can see that V is equal to IR. Sorry, I'll say that again. If P equals VI and V equals IR, then I can say that P equals V, which is IR, times I. And that's I squared R. So power can also be written I squared R. It's also true that if V equals IR, that I equals V over R. And that means I can now write that power equals VI, which is V times I, but I is V over R. So it's V times V over R, which is V squared over R. So power can be written in one of three ways. It's either the voltage times the current, or it's the current squared times the resistance, or it's the voltage squared divided by the resistance. They are all one and the same thing. The efficiency of an electrical component is defined as the energy, indeed the useful energy that you get out, divided by the energy that you have to put in. 
Ideally, we would like it to be 100%, but it never is. Consider, for example, a 100 watt bulb, which is typically the filament lamp that you might have uh, fitted to the lighting fitting at the ceiling, which is lighting up your room. And let's say that the voltage of your home supply is 250 volts. I know that in some parts of the world that's not the case. Even here in the UK, it's 230, but to keep things simple, I'm gonna call it 250. This is the power. It's a 100 watt bulb, and it's going to be attached to a voltage which is 250 volts. So the first thing I can do is to calculate the current. P, remember, power is current times voltage or voltage times current, which means that the current must equal the power divided by the voltage. And that's 100 watts divided by 250 volts, and that's 0.4 amps. Just to remind you, since I glibly said the power was 100 watts, you may recall that when we did the mechanics part of this course, I pointed out that the unit of power was watts. That is also joules per second, because power, okay, right back to our starting point, power is energy divided by time, energy is measured in joules, time is measured in seconds, so power is joules per second, but it's also given the name watts. But let's continue with our filament lamp, which is a 100 watt bulb. It's being used on a voltage supply of 250 volts, the main supply, and there will be a current of 0.4 amps going through it. So now we can work out what the resistance is of that uh, filament bulb. V equals IR. So R is V divided by I, which is going to be 250, that's the voltage, divided by 0.4, and that comes to 625 ohms. And you'll recall that, of course, because it's a filament bulb, that resistance will increase as it gets hotter. But initially, it's 625 ohms. Now, ideally, what we would like to think is that the 100 watt of power which is being dissipated in that bulb would give us 100 watts of light. You should be so lucky. The amount of light you get is very, very small. Nearly everything is heat, and that is largely wasted heat. It's not hot enough to warm the room. It just makes the light very hot. So of the 100 watts of power that you're supplying, only a small fraction of that comes out as light. So that's a very, very inefficient system. It uses a lot of energy, but it doesn't provide anything like that energy's worth of light. By contrast, Light-emitting diodes, which we came across in an earlier video on this electricity series, are much more efficient because much more of the power, much more of the energy, goes to providing light, and hardly any goes to providing heat. And if you've got LEDs, light-emitting diodes are commonly now being used for Christmas tree lights, lights that you hang outside. If you touch one of those lights, you'll find it's perfectly cold, it's the normal room temperature. By contrast, if you touch a Christmas tree light that is made of filament bulb, they can get quite hot, and of course they can become a fire risk. Now how does your electricity company charge you for the amount of electricity you use? What they actually charge you for is the energy you use. And we remember that power is energy divided by time. So in a sense, what they're doing is saying energy is power times time, and power is in units of watts, time is in units of seconds, energy, of course, is in units of joules. So a joule is a watt second. A watt is a joule per second. So you might expect on your electricity bill to find that the energy you have used is either in the form of watt seconds or in the form of joules. You'll be very unlikely to see either of those because electricity companies have their own unit of energy, which is the kilowatt hour. 
And they do that because that gives them smaller numbers. It doesn't look quite so horrendous, as we'll see in an example I'll give you in a moment. A kilowatt, of course, is a thousand watts. An hour is 3,600 seconds. So a kilowatt hour is equal to a thousand times 3,600, which is 3.6 million watt seconds. So when they charge you for one kilowatt hour, they are charging you for the equivalent of 3.6 million watt seconds. And that's why they don't charge in terms of watt seconds, because you get massive numbers. So now let's look at some typical questions that might illustrate this. The first question is, I have got a two kilowatt fire, electric fire, two kilowatt rated, and I put it on for 10 minutes to warm me up. The question is, what energy am I using? Well, let's remember that power is energy divided by time. So energy is power times time. We must always convert to the proper units. So the power, sorry, the power is two kilowatts, which is 2000 watts, times the time, which is 10 minutes, that's 600 seconds. So that is going to be 1,200,000 joules. So putting my two kilowatt fire on for 10 minutes, I use 1,200,000 joules. Or you could write that as 1,200 kilojoules because a K represents the thousand. But either way, that sounds an awful lot. By contrast, if I do it in kilowatt hours, then I've got two kilowatt hours multiplied by 10 minutes, or well, 10 minutes is just a sixth of an hour. So it's two times one over six, which is one over three kilowatt hours. It's a third of a kilowatt hour. And now you can see why the electric company prefers to charge you in kilowatt hours. A third of a kilowatt hour, puh, that sounds hardly anything. 1,200,000 joules of energy sounds phenomenal. They are, of course, exactly the same thing, but you'll find that you're charged in terms of kilowatt hours. Here's the second question. It's about fuses. Fuses are thin pieces of wire which will take a maximum current. The idea is that if the current gets too high, then the wire will get hot and melt. And so if the current gets larger than it should, the fuse wire melts, the whole current is switched off, and that's safety. We've got a hairdryer, which is rated as one kilowatt. That's its power. And it's going to operate in the UK on a voltage of 230 volts. And the question is, what fuse should we use to make sure that that is safe? Fuses come in varying sizes. You can get two amp fuses, three amp fuses, five amp fuses, and 13 amp fuses. Basically, what that means is that if the current exceeds the value of the fuse, then the fuse will blow and the whole current will be switched off. So, for our hairdryer, power is voltage times current, which means that current is power divided by voltage, which is one kilowatt, which is a thousand watts, divided by 230 volts, and that comes to 4.3 amps. So when the hairdryer is being used normally and it's functioning properly, it will consume 4.3 amps. So the appropriate fuse to use is the 5 amp, because if the current rises to 5 amps or more, something's gone wrong and you need to shut it off. No put, put, point putting a 3 amp fuse in because the 3 amp fuse will blow even if the device is working normally because normally it needs 4.3 amps. The next question. I have an electric razor which uses a 9 volt battery and it takes a current of 0.5 amps and I use it for three minutes to have a shave. And I want to know three things. What is the total charge? What is the total energy? And is all that energy useful energy? One. What is the total charge? 
Well, we remember that the definition of a current is charge divided by time. So charge is equal to current times time. And so charge is going to be equal to the current, which is 0.5 amps, times the time, which is three minutes. That has to be converted into seconds. That's 180 seconds, and that's 90. And the unit of charge is coulombs. So you're using 90 coulombs of charge when you use the razor for three minutes. The second question is, what is the energy that is consumed? And we remember that the definition of a volt is the work done in moving charge. So it's work divided by charge. And work is energy. So consequently, work, which equals energy, is going to be V times Q. And that means that the energy is equal to the voltage. Well, I told you what that was. That is a nine volt battery is driving the razor. So it's nine times the charge, which we just worked out was 90 coulombs when we run the razor for three minutes. And that's going to be 810 and energy is measured in joules. So we're using 810 joules of energy when we use that razor for three minutes. And the last question was, is it all useful energy? In other words, does all the energy go into turning the rotor blades so that it can cut um, the hairs wherever I'm using the razor? And the answer is no, because some of that energy will go into sound. You can hear the razor whirring. Some of it will go into heat. You can actually feel that the razor gets a little hot. So not all the energy is going into what you want it to do, which is to turn the rotor blades so it isn't 100% efficient. And my final exam question says that I have a torch. The bulb in the torch requires 0.6 amps going through it, and it's driven by a nine volt battery. And the first question, there are three questions here. The first question is, what is the power that is used by that torch? Well, power, is equal to voltage times current, and we've got both, so that's pretty simple. The voltage is nine, the current is 0 0.6, and that's going to give you 5.4 watts. So the torch has a power of 5.4 watts. The second question is, if I leave the torch on for 20 minutes, what charge do I use? And here we remember that current is charge over time, which means that charge is equal to current times time. So the total charge, which is what we want, is equal to the current, which is 0 0.6 amps, times the time, and we leave the torch on for 20 minutes, which is, of course, 1200 seconds. And that's going to equal 720, and the unit of charge is coulombs. So we use 720 coulombs of charge when we leave the torch on for 20 minutes. And the final question is, what is the energy that is consumed when the torch is on for 20 minutes? We remember that the definition of a volt is that that is the work done or energy per unit charge, which means you can rearrange this to say that work, which equals energy, is equal to the voltage times the charge. So that means that the energy, which is what we want, is the voltage which of course was nine volts, it was a nine volt battery, times the charge, which was 720 coulombs. So nine times 720, I think comes to 6480, and the unit is joules.